The circular flow of income shows the movement of income, output and expenditure throughout the economy. So it's really a basic model of how the economy works, with the two key agents being households and firms. And so we can see here we've got flows from households to firms in the form of consumer spending. And in return for this, output flows from firms to households in the form of goods and services. And at the same time, you have households providing their services to firms in the form of labour. And then flowing back from firms to households is the payment for this labour in the form of wages. And in a closed economy with only households and firms, that's how it would work with income, output and expenditure flowing round and around this model. If we wanted to measure the size of this economy, we can do that using the income earned in producing these goods and services. We could measure the value of the output produced, or we could measure the expenditure used in purchasing this output. And in theory, they should all give you the same answer. The income earned creating the goods would be equal to the value of those goods, which would be equal to the expenditure on those goods as well. So we have income equal to output equal to expenditure. But it was never going to be quite that simple because we also have these injections into the circular flow of income and then leakages out of the circular flow of income. And so you can see here we've got an injection in the form of investment. So that's spending by businesses on capital goods, which will be an injection causing the circular flow of income to grow. But at the same time, these consumers are not going to be spending every penny they earn. Some will be leaking out of the circular flow in the form of savings, and that will be decreasing its size. And the next injection you can see here we have is government spending, because households and firms aren't the only agents in an economy. Governments will also purchase goods and services, which boosts the circular flow of income. But much of this government spending will actually be funded by taxation, which is a leakage out of the circular flow. And then also we have to consider that goods and services which are sold internationally, so these exports, or well, the spending on those exports from abroad comes in as an injection into our circular flow. And that's then got to be balanced against UK consumers who will spend on imports rather than home produced goods, which will cause a final leakage from the circular flow of income. Linked to the circular flow of income are these concepts of the multiplier and the accelerator effect. So the multiplier is the process by which an injection into the circular flow of income results in a greater final increase in aggregate demand. And the reason for that is that as the circular flow actually shows, one person's expenditure is another's income. So if I get a £500 boost to my income, I might decide to go out and buy a nice new suit. The tailor that I decide to buy it from gets a boost they wouldn't otherwise have had without my £500 and so he goes out and buys a new TV. The TV salesman gets a boost to their income and so on and so on and it goes on through the economy like that. And so if the value of the multiplier was 2, it would mean a £500 government infrastructure project, so £500 of government spending injected into the circular flow would lead to a final increase of aggregate demand of one billion pounds. And that's because of this recycling of expenditure through the economy. Now we've then got the accelerator, which is about the relationship between output and investment. And it says that levels of investment are actually dependent on the rate of change of GDP rather than its overall level. So if GDP is increasing rapidly, even from a relatively moderate level, investment will accelerate. And that's linked to the multiplier as the additional investment has a multiplier effect causing a greater final effect on output. And it's this process that's what, that what intensifies the boom phase of the economic cycle. And the same thing actually happens in reverse. So when GDP starts to fall, investment rapidly drops 
and the resulting negative multiplier effect causes the cycle to slow down and move back towards a slump.